Hey, church family and friends, welcome to our worship service. I'm so glad that you took the time out today to join me as we dig into the Word of God and pull out those spiritual truths and see how we can apply these to our lives so that we can get the victory that Jesus Christ died for us to have. And I hope you've been enjoying these messages. I'm going to continue our study today in the book of Nehemiah. We're looking at how do we make our lives count? You know, you are chosen, you are special, you are created on purpose, you are created with gifts, talents, and abilities, and God is, you know, holding us accountable to make our lives count. Amen? Amen. So I pray that this, this blessing, these have been a, a series of practical studies, you know, ways that we can, we can really apply these simple truths to our lives and, and see what happens. See if, if God says, if, if we, we can prove God, prove him to be true or prove him to be a liar. And I guarantee you that God is a God that he cannot lie. Everything that he says comes to pass. Everything that he created is good. And you, child of God, have been created to do something great, to do something good, and to make your life count. Amen. So thank you for joining me today. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to share your word, Lord. Thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for giving us the ability to understand your word with the help of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that these words are falling on good ground right now and that this ground will produce good fruit that will glorify you, Jesus. That's our heart's desire. That's what we want to do is to glorify you and lift you up through our lives, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Nehemiah. Like I said, we've been looking at, the, at Nehemiah, using him as a case study into how we can make our lives count. And so today, I, the, the title of my message today is People and Your Purpose. People and Your Purpose. How in the world or what in the world do people have to do with your purpose? Well, we're going to dig into that today and see how Nehemiah used people in furthering his purpose. Amen. You know, there's seven, over, over seven billion at this point in time, over seven billion different humans on earth. All over the world, seven billion people on earth. And you know, back in the beginning of time when God created the first human being in, in Adam, you know, that word human comes from uh, two, two words, humus. Humus means dirt, and man is spirit, so God breathed Back in the beginning of time in Adam, he, he breathed his spirit life into dirt. And this is how we get the combination of those two, two words, human, humus, and man. So human, and there's 7 billion humans, over 7 billion humans on planet Earth today. And it's amazing that each one of those humans, if they've been given gifts, talents, and abilities, that they need each other to fulfill their purpose. See, no, no man is an island. There's no one that's smart enough, that's, more, that's powerful enough to fulfill and execute, accomplish something by themselves. And the bigger your purpose, the bigger the thing that you were created to do, the more people you are going to need to fulfill your purpose. See, we didn't just come here on earth just to go through the motions of just being here on earth and it's for no purpose and no reason. The why, we, we all have a why for why we're here on earth. And we know that as human beings, we are made up of three separate parts, all in one person, one being, just like God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Well, we are spirit. Who you are is a spirit. Just because your parents named you a name and you look at this physical body in a mirror doesn't mean that's who you are or that is all that you are. See, you are a spirit. You live in this physical body, and you have a soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So God deploys human beings, dirt man, in a, a spirit in a dirt man. He deploys human beings to earth to fulfill a purpose. And so if you're here on earth, you're living in, in you've got a body, you're here on earth, you're breathing, you're living, you, you've got the mental capacity to think. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you are here on earth for a purpose. Amen? See, God builds people 
or creates people to help people. Every single person, I believe, comes together to form. Uh, it's almost like a knitting of a tapestry of God's work of art to help each other. It doesn't matter your beliefs, your, your, your background. We all can come together and help each other out because we've got different talents, different abilities, different giftings that God has given each and every one of us. Amen? You know, you can, this is proven out by folks that work in a company together. Regardless of, of where you came from, what you look like, the color of your skin, all people have gifts and talents and abilities that can come together to fulfill and accomplish a specific purpose. Amen? I think about Steve Jobs. You know, Steve Jobs envisioned what an iPhone would look like, how it would work. But as great as that thought and that, that vision is, Steve Jobs would, or we would not benefit from the people that help Steve Jobs to, to, to build those phones and to get those phone to, phones to market and to market those phones so that we could get a phone in our hand and we can see the benefit from that phone. It's the same thing in our lives. See, God has given us purpose. He's given us the ability to plan and to think. But it just doesn't stop there. He is also going to give us people in our lives to help our purpose. And some people, oh yeah, I'm going to go through it today, <laughs> are going to be sent to destroy your purpose. And so we can't get away from people in our lives. Like I said, there are a lot of people on earth and, you know, people come together to fulfill something and achieve something. We cannot get away from people. I don't care how much you like people, how much you, you hate people. If you're going to be something, if you're going to achieve your purpose, if you're going to go into achieve what God has created you to do, you're going to have to get with people. <laughs> There's no way around it, all right? So here's the, here's the, um, the, the foundation of, of my message, the three points that I'm going to try to go through. I may get through one or two of them today, and if not, we'll continue into next week. But here, here's how I summed up the three categories of, of people. It's kind of like uh, ice cream, <laughs> candy. It comes in different flavors. Well, human beings come in different flavors as well. Let me explain. I'm going to sum it up in, in three different flavors that people come in. You're going to have the good people, people that help you further your purpose, people that are on board with your purpose. They're going to encourage your purpose. They were sent to help you further your purpose. Y'all are all of the same mindset, working toward the same vision. These are the good people that are going to be a part of your purpose. And then you got the bad people. <laughs> you got bad people that are going to be deployed to destroy your purpose. And then you got the ugly people. They just get downright nasty in trying to destroy your people. So the f three flavors, <laughs> that's right, the three flavors of people that I'm going to go through today are the good, the bad, and the ugly, all right? <laughs> so here we go. Turn me to the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 2. Nehemiah chapter 2, starting at verse 11, and I'm going to start with the good people. Yeah, the good people. So in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 11, you know, we know the story of Nehemiah at this point in time. He is he is, he's got a clear passion about his purpose, what he's supposed to do, be doing. He spent a lot of time in prayer about his purpose. In that prayer time, he has developed a detailed plan about his purpose, and he's about to start to execute the construction or the reconstruction of the wall around Jerusalem. And so in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 11, it says, So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. Then I arose in the night. I and a few men with me, I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem, nor was there any animal with me except the one on which I rode. See, ladies and gentlemen, the good people that you're going to have in your life to help you fulfill your purpose, they're going to fall into two categories under good people. You're going to have good people that are on your, or in your inner courts or close to you, folks that know your vision, know your purpose, and you're going to have people that are on the outer courts. They're good people, but they're on the, good, they're on the outer courts. 
Nehemiah, when he went to go and survey the land and, and see where he was going to rebuild this wall, he didn't tell everybody about his plans and his purpose. He didn't go promoting it on social media. He didn't go putting commercials on TV. He didn't go telling any and everybody what was going on. The scripture says he went to a few select people. See, these are good people that are close to him. These are people that are going to believe his vision. There are people that are going to get it. Some people are not going to get your vision. Some people just won't get what God has placed in your heart to do. But Nehemiah, he, he found a few close friends. He found a few close confidants, people that he can talk to, people that he can articulate his vision with, and that would help him fine-tune that vision. Go with him at night to survey the area, to see what it was going to take to execute this purpose. Child of God, don't, don't, don't feel like you've got to share everything in your life on social media. Everything in your life does not warrant you taking a selfie of the thing or the new car, the new house, the new hairdo. My goodness, do you have to put everything that you do in your life, every second of your life lived on social media? See, Nehemiah focused in on a few close friends that he can go and share this mission with, this vision with, what, he, what God has placed on his heart to do. He only shared it with a few close friends. Amen? See, people, everyone isn't going to be ready for the... Everyone isn't going to see what you see. Everybody isn't going to get it. So don't feel like everyone is going to get it. Don't be discouraged when... You share your mission and your vision with someone and they don't get it. Don't be concerned, amen? Don't be, don't be discouraged. The next group of good people I want to talk to you about is uh, folks that are, they're in the outer court, okay? When you start to develop your mission, your purpose, you've got a plan, you're going to need a close inner court, inner group of people that really get it, that are really behind you, that are really thinking things through with you. But in addition to that inner court, those those people that are closest to you, you're going to also need the outer court of good people, of good friends. Watch this. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17. Now Nehemiah says, then I said to them, you see the distress that we are in. This is Nehemiah. He's speaking to the, the group of Jews that are in Jerusalem that have returned. And he said, you see the stress, distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies in waste and its gates are burned with fire? Come. And let us build the wall of Jerusalem, that we may no longer be a reproach. Ladies and gentlemen, he's now broadcasting his mission and his vision out to a larger audience. See, Nehemiah can't just go out with these three or four people in his inner circle and create and finish this rebuild of this, the, the wall around Jerusalem. He needs more people. And so he's going to find people. He's going to find the, the, the chosen people, the ones that God had set apart for him to utilize to do God's work. And so he now broadcast his vision and he says, let us. Nehemiah just didn't say, hey, us four are no more. Let's go and do this thing. See, the bigger the call is on your life, the more people you're going to have to engage. The bigger the dream, the bigger the burden of the, your purpose that God has placed on the inside of your heart, the more people you're going to need. You're going to need people on the inner circle, and you're going to need people on the outer circle. Amen? And so Nehemiah pushes out this vision to people that are just like him, that are in, this, in distress, and they, they may be in a bad situation and don't know how to fix it, but God kind of brings Nehemiah as the leader the architect of, of his purpose and his plan, and he broadcasts this vision out to them, and he says, let's do it together. Let us. That's the key word that I want you to think about. Let us. Nehemiah is, is compelling them to come and join me. This is a good work. This is a good thing that God has placed on my heart to do. Amen? In verse 18, he says, and I told them of the hand of God, which had been good upon me. And also the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. Isn't that a beautiful picture? The good people, the positive people that are with you, that are behind you, that are 
now joining together with your mission and your vision, your purpose, and they are ready to go. They are enthusiastic about going out and rebuilding this wall, and they're saying, let us go and do this thing. This is a good thing that God has called us to do. And so the scripture says, then they set their hands to do this work. You know, my, my question to you today is, in making your life count, if you do an assessment of your life, all of the different connections, all of the different things that you're working on and that you're contributing your, your time to, time is the biggest gift that God has given us all equally. My question to you is, are you working on things that are going to contribute toward eternity, toward God's kingdom? Are, are you working on good things that are going to further the glory of God, that are going to lift up the name of Jesus? Or are you just doing things that are going to lift up your name, that's going to lift up the flesh, that's going to lift up uh, things that are just going to turn into rubbish? Or are you lifting up the name of God. See, the Bible says that God has placed in the heart of every human being <laughs> a little bit of eternity. So every human being has a yearning on the inside of them to be a part of eternity, to be a part of, of something good that God's hand is upon to move things further into eternity, to progress his kingdom. See, child of God, your life is designed to count. Your life is designed to achieve big things. There's a yearning on the inside of every human being to be a part of eternity, to do something great, to move God's kingdom forward. Amen? So my question to you is, what, what is that thing that you are a part of right now that's furthering the kingdom of God? See, we all may not have this big, grandiose vision of doing something great and building a, a, a wall, opening a a Fortune 500 company, you may or you may not, but every person from the smallest child to the oldest person, as long as you are here on earth, you can be connected to a good thing. You can be connected to a God thing. God's uh, purpose for your life may be to be connected to something that's moving forward on purpose. You may not be the leader of that thing, but you have been created and sanctified to be a part of that thing. See, no man is an island. No one has got it all figured out. <laughs> no one is that smart that they don't need other people's ideas, opinions, um, thoughts, constructive feedback, um, support just from uh, words of encouragement. Everybody has got a gifting. Everybody has got a part to play into helping out a mission and vision. So what is the thing that you're a part of? What is the legacy that you're going to leave for your family? And your kids. What is the thing that you, 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 can, you can tell your kids, look, I was a part of that church that God built. I was a part of that business that God built. And look at all of the people that it served. Look at all of the people that came and gave their life to Christ. I was a part of that. See, ladies and gentlemen, it takes a team. It takes a team to make the dream work. Like the saying goes, teamwork makes the dream work. Ladies and gentlemen, you are created to be a part of, you are created to help achieve a vision, achieve a purpose. Amen? Amen. I, and I love this. So in Nehemiah chapter 3, I'm not going to go through the entire thing, but this, this is just beautiful to me because I know, I, I personally know what it takes to, to grow something, to to develop something, to, to have a vision, to be passionate about your vision and your mission and, and what it takes to get that vision done and that mission done. It, and it, it's so beautiful to me to see in Nehemiah chapter 3, I'm not going to read the entire thing because I don't want you to fall asleep on me. Nehemiah chapter 3, starting from verse 1 all the way to verse 32, there's this, these two words that are found throughout that entire chapter of Nehemiah and it says, next to it talks about all of these people that after they've gotten the vision, after Nehemiah has found all of these good people that have bought into the mission and they've bought into the vision, they are now ready to go. They've got a good plan. They've all been prayed up. You know, they're moving forward on a purpose that's going to further the kingdom. They are now ready to go. And in this chapter of Nehemiah, it talks about all of the people that came next to each other. 
It talks about this person came next to that person and they built this part of the wall. This person came next to that person and they built this gate. This person came next to that person and they helped to further the process. This is just a beautiful, this is what God, this is what God is all about. God is about all people, all colors, all, all different walks of life coming together to further his kingdom. God is, God is about purpose. God is about furthering his kingdom. This is just a beautiful picture of how they were able to come together and further his kingdom. You know, I, I, I liken this a little bit to kind of the, the, a little bit of the story of, of my life when I had a, a desire. I feel like God had placed a burden in my heart to, to, you know, leave the island that I was from. I'm from a Nassau, a small island. It's about 21 miles long by seven miles wide. And, you know, I had this burning desire in my heart to go off to college and, and get a degree, become educated, and try to better my life with education. And I, I remember the, the, the days of, of speaking with my grandmother and talking about my desire and my dream and how I believe that God had placed this on my heart to, to go off to school and, and become educated. And, you know, I, I, I spoke with her about the finances. Like, this is going to cost so much money. Here's the research that I've done. This is what it's going to cost. Where in the world am I going to find this money to go to school? And, you know, my grandmother, and, and I remember that, that conversation so clearly, and she, she reminded me that God is going to find a way. God is going to figure it out. Don't worry about that. Uh, God's going to figure it out. And I'm a very analytical guy, so in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, this is just grandmama talk, right? <laughs> this, this, this ain't going to pay the school fee. This, is, this isn't going to get it done. But I appreciate your kind words, grandmama. But, you know, God found a way. You know, God found a way through different opportunities, different uh, loans, different means and avenues to, to, to get me to, to school. But that's just one avenue of, of what it took to achieve that vision and achieve that goal. See, along the process, there are people that, that just give you encouragement, people that encouraged me to keep going when things got rough, when, when the burden of the classes got tough, when the being away from home became a challenge. You know, people's encouraging words, friends that I met along the way that were encouraging, that welcomed me. See, it takes, it, it, it takes a village. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how much stuff you've got. You are going to need people in your life to encourage you. I remember this, uh, a very close friend from my, the neighborhood that I grew up in, in the Bahamas, and you know, every time my mother would, would mail me letters of encouragement, I still have those letters today that I kind of reflect on every now and again. Um, those letters of encouragement from my mom and, you know, her and a friend of hers would, would send me $20. That's right, $20 in a letter. And I remember specifically, you know, thinking that what an encouragement. It wasn't about how much money it was. It was just the thought that, this kid is trying to do something with his life. This kid is trying to, to better himself. I'm just going to send a small token of my appreciation for him, a $20 bill, just to say, hey, hang in there. Be encouraged. We're rooting for you. We're praying for you. We're encouraging you. Ladies and gentlemen, you can be an encouragement to somebody. Don't just take that small thing that you're doing for somebody to encourage them as, as an in, uh, you know, it's, it's just a small thing. It's not going to matter. Yes, it's going to matter. See, because we are sent, God ordains people to speak into our lives at a specific time, to give us words of encouragement, to pray for us, amen? And so you are going to need people to help you along with your purpose. It's just like God said for us as the body of Christ, no one is higher than the other or better than the other. How could the heir say to the body that I don't have any, any place for you? How can, you know, the... The hand say, look, I'm, I'm all of that. I'm, I got it all figured out. I don't need you, uh, air or eyes. No. As the body of Christ, we have to come together and support each other as we continue to move forward on purpose. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, I want to try to move on a little quicker here and go to number two, the bad. So we looked at the good. You got the good that's on the inner circle, those close to you. You got the good that are on the outer circle, those that are just 
you know, a part of the plan. They're playing their role on the team. You need all of those, but look out because you're going to have the bad. Here we go. Oh, yeah, the bad. So these are going to be people that are going to be toxic. They're going to be intentionally deployed to stop and kill your purpose. <laughs> They're going to kill your dreams, but only if you let them. If you let them kill your dreams, then they're going to kill your dreams. Amen? Let's watch, it th watch this. Go back to Nehemiah chapter 2, looking at verse 19. Check this out. So these bad folks, here's what they look like. Nehemiah, he's got the people ready. They're geared up to do this work. They're ready to rebuild the wall. And then in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 19, it says, But when Sanballat the Hornite, Tobiah the Ammonite official, and Geshem, the Arab, heard of it. What did they hear of? They heard about all of these people coming together to rebuild this wall. They laughed at us and despised us and said, what is this thing that you are doing? Will you rebel against the king? <laughs> There's always going to be the bad, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to just settle that in your spirit right now. You can't get sensitive. You can't get soft. You can't get in your feelings and start feeling some kind of way when the enemy deploys these bad people to attack you, because it's going to happen. As soon as you get ready to do something, as soon as you're ready to get ready to chart, charter a course forward to fulfill your purpose, the enemy is going to attack this thing. The decision to go back to school to get that degree, the decision to uh, educate yourself and add more value to yourself so that you can be promoted. The decision to start that new business venture that God has placed on your heart. The decision to, to uh, just better yourself in, in, in your prayer life, in your time. The decision to not waste a lot of your time just going out and hanging out with friends and just wasting your entire life doing nothing. The decision to pull all of that back. As soon as you decide to change your life, to better your life, the haters are going to come out. <laughs> as soon as you do it. And then, uh, let's go a little further. Go back now to, to, to chapter 4. Chapter 4. Chapter 2, 19, we see, we see the haters come out in, in chapter 4. Now, verse 1, when everybody is next to each other, everybody is helping each other out, everybody is working things out together. Watch what verse, chapter 4, verse 1 says. It says, but it so happened when Sanballat, that loser again, heard that we were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. <laughs> See, as long as you're not doing anything, you're not bothering anyone, you're not looking to further yourself, no one has anything to say about you, no one has anything to say to you, but the moment you decide to improve your life, do something for the kingdom of God, they're going to come out of the woodworks. This dude here, Sand Ballad, he got indignant. He was upset he started mocking the see he first started off as la he was laughing at him he was laughing at him that they were trying to rebuild this wall what in the world are they trying to do uh, you know then he starts to see them making progress he starts to see them starting to to get this thing rebuilt he sees this person next to this person that person next to that person and now he not only laughs at them he starts to get indignant he starts to mock them verse 2 says, and he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish? Stones that are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him and he said, whatever they build, if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. Ladies and gentlemen, the haters are going to come out. <laughs> the haters are going to come out. What is this thing that she's trying to do? What is this business that she's trying to do? I'm better at her than this. I'm, I'm, she, she, can't even, she can't even cook. What is this cooking business that she's trying to go and do? What is, what is this thing that she, it's not going to work out? You going back to school isn't going to work. You're not that smart. You don't have any money. They're going to come out, and those are the things that they're going to say. They're going to be watching you. They're going to be talking about you. They're going to be um, speaking about you when you're not there. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to do something for the kingdom of God, if you're going to 
press on in life and fulfill the purpose with which God called you to do. You've got to settle it in your spirit that you're going to have some haters that are going to come after you to distract you and to destroy you and to beat you up. And ladies and gentlemen, some of those haters, again, they may be in your close relatives. <laughs> they may be in your family. They may be people that they, they just want you to do the safe thing. You know, don't go ahead and take that risk. Don't go do this thing. You know, stick with your job. Stay on that job for 30, 40 years. Retire and, 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 and keep the benefits you got. Get a plaque and get a watch for 60 years. And God has placed a, for working with a company for, for 30, 40 years. Go ahead and get that plaque. That's going to be enough. You're going to get good benefits. Don't go start that thing that God, did God speak to you? How's God going to provide you with any benefits? How are we going to pay our bills? <laughs> Listen, ladies and gentlemen, child of God, if God has placed a burden on the inside of you, if God has placed on, on a little bit of eternity on the inside of you, if he's given you a glimpse of what he created you to do and be, your job is to be obedient. <laughs> your job is to continue to pray, to be obedient to what God created you to do because he is your source, he is your creator, and he is the one that's going to bring it to pass. Amen? Amen. Let me wrap it up, go in into verse 6 in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6. Verse 6 says, So we built the wall, and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. I just love it. See, when a group of people get together with God's purpose, God's uh, glory in mind, they're using their talents and their abilities to further the kingdom of God. They're of one mindset. See, that's a critical thing. When they're of one mindset, see, the haters can't shut you down. Nothing can stop when God's hand is upon a vision. When God's kingdom as a, is, is, is being deployed to gain more territory in every area of life. Nothing can stop it. See, you can then go ahead and use those haters as motivators. <laughs> Praise God. It's not about them, but you got to settle it in your spirit that you're going to have some people that don't want you to succeed, that don't want you to be successful. But if God is for you, who can be against you? A group of like-minded people cannot be stopped. If they're backed, you remember the Tower of Babel? Those people were of one mind. And God himself had to step into that because a group of people locked in on a vision, locked in on a mission, and they're of the same mindset, they're unstoppable. God himself has to step down out of heaven to break that, that mission and vision up because it's that powerful. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I hope you're getting something out of this. I hope uh, you can realize that you don't have to be discouraged you don't need to stop. You don't need to quit just because someone has slandered you, just because people are talking about you. Ladies and gentlemen, the minute you decide to do something for the kingdom of God, you're going to be the discussion of many private lunches that you hadn't been invited to. You're going to be discussed at many dinner tables, and they did, they did not even invite you to the discussion. You just got to settle that in your spirit. If you're going to accomplish anything in your life, if you're going to make your life count, you can't worry about negative people. You can't worry about the bad. The bad is just going to be there. You got to settle it in your spirit that people are going to talk about you. Oh, yeah. People are going to post things about you. Oh, yeah. People are going to say things about you. People are going to have conversations on the phone about you for hours and hours upon end, but you can't be distracted. You've got to stay of one mind. You've got to stay focused on building the wall. That's right. Every time you hear a hater, you just stay focused on building the wall. You just use that as motivation to do the thing that God has created you to do. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the, the, the word that you have given us today. Thank you, Lord, that whenever you have given us a purpose, a mission, a vision, gifts, talents, and abilities, nothing can stop it. Thank you, Lord, for the good folks that you have deployed in our lives to help us fulfill our purpose. And Father, we even thank you for the negative people, Lord, because they are just going to make us stronger. They're just going to make the glory that you receive from the thing, the purpose that you have given us to do that much better. And Father, we just praise you in the midst of the, the 
um, the attack right now. We just praise you, Lord, because we believe in you. We trust you. We believe that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up in judgment will be condemned in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, well I want to give you an opportunity to worship, continue our worship of, of, of God with our giving. So if you've got your, your phone, you know, we, we, we're able to give online now and so if you got your phone and your wallet whatever you have to to represent your giving i just want to pray over your offering heavenly father i thank you lord that you trust us with provisions thank you lord that you give us health and strength and the ability to go out and work and earn a living father i thank you that you protect us you provide for us and you reward us for being obedient to your word Father, as we give with a cheerful heart, Lord, we don't give out of reluctance. We don't give out of because we have to. We just give because we love you. We worship you. It's a little bit of our worship to you. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, praise God. Oh, listen, if, if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to I extend that invitation to you today. You know, God the Father sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins. And today can be your day of salvation. If that's you, I just want to pray this prayer with you. Repeat it after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die for my sins. Father, I pray that as I receive and confess Jesus Christ by faith, you give me your Holy Spirit. Send your Holy Spirit into my heart right now. And I receive him by faith. Thank you, Lord. And I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I confess that you raised him from the dead and that he is seated with you right now. Thank you, Lord, that you have given me purpose. You have created me for a, a specific reason. Father, I pray that you continue to reveal that to me and send the right people in my path to help me fulfill my mission and vision. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well, praise God. Until next time, may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you. May the Lord Jesus Christ make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord Jesus Christ release his favor, his goodness and mercy in your life. You've got to believe that and confess that every day, every morning you wake up, that his goodness and his mercies are chasing you down because you've got a Father in heaven that loves you. I pray that his peace his peace that surpasses all understanding. It guards your heart and your mind. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, until next time, you be blessed, and I look forward to seeing you. Well, thank you for watching this message. I pray that it was a blessing to you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram so that you can continue to receive uplifting and encouraging messages just like this one. And join us every Saturday at 5 p.m. where we have our fellowship and worship services. And if you feel led to give and sow into this ministry so that we can continue to further the gospel of Jesus Christ, the information is shown below there on your screen where you can mail your giving in or do it online. Thanks again for watching and be blessed.